TJ Kirk, the amazing atheist, um, did a video the other day. It popped up on my feed. Uh, his podcast, Deep Fat Fried, was banned from YouTube. And it was banned for an incredibly dumb reason. Take a look. Hello, everybody. Um, our December 1st edition of Flash Fried has been removed by YouTube for a supposed violation of their rules against misinformation. Uh, this is due to a satirical statement that Scotty made during the episode in which he facetiously doubted the veracity of the 2020 election. Our viewers know that we do not spread misinformation about the election and actively mock the radical right-wingers who do. We find it troubling that many channels on YouTube actively push election conspiracies without consequence, yet our channel receives a strike for a completely sarcastic and satirical statement. We are confident that this strike will be removed once we can penetrate deep enough into YouTube's so-called support system to actually speak with a human being. But we wanted you all to know what was going on, and we thank you for your attention and for your support. This is crazy. So, Scotty, TJ's brother, co-host on Deep Fat Fried, Paul Zigo is the other one, by the way, um, he was being satirical and he was playing the character of like the right wing idiot. And he was talking about, yeah, like stop the steal 2020 election stolen and Donald Trump won. And YouTube looked at that and said, that is a, that's a person trying to make a factual claim about the election and it's not true and it's spreading misinformation. And so now we're going to give them a bogus strike. Now they appealed it a number of times and every time they were overruled and the strike stands. What? What? Look, that's one of those things where, you know, you say, oh, okay, maybe it was an accident, whatever. On the first appeal, the first attempt, they got to be like, oh, our bad. We apologize. They didn't do it. They rejected it. As of the recording of this video, as far as I know, they still have that strike. We got to stop with this, man. This is madness. Look, I'll go a step further. Uh, and this might be something that... I, they might even disagree with me on this, but I'm going to go this step further. Even if somebody was downplaying the results of the election, they're wrong and they're dumb. There were 60 court cases that upheld the result. Even Trump-appointed judges were like, you didn't win, bro. Get over it. They did the Arizona audit, and they expected Trump to win Arizona after that the conclusion of that audit. And what ended up happening is Biden won by more. Biden won. Full stop. But if somebody says the opposite, I wouldn't ban them. I wouldn't ban them. I sort of want to know where the crazy people are so I could point at them and laugh and mock them and do satire around them. But apparently you can't even do that now. Look, ultimately, I think it was a mistake. I think it will eventually get reversed. But this is why you never, you should never open the door in the first place to this kind of nonsense. Because if you can't discuss a conspiracy theory like that, well, then obviously you can't discuss a conspiracy theory like 9-11. And then obviously you can't discuss what well, what happens when you get to the conspiracy theories that the majority of Americans think are true, like that the JFK one where they say it wasn't just Lee Harvey Oswald who acted and something deeper went on there. Can you not talk about that either? Like, in order to discuss the true conspiracy theories, you have to also allow people to discuss the incorrect conspiracy theories and the wrong conspiracy theories. I mean, UFOs aren't verified, or at least the existence of aliens isn't verified, but are you not allowed to do any videos on that or talk about that because it's... It's not true and not verified, so it's misinformation. You can't, like, once you open this door, there's no shutting it. And everybody, anybody who's mildly offended by something or anybody who makes a claim of fact about something, it could just ban that person, ban that person, ban that person, ban that person. And this is even, like, making fun of the people who are wrong and incorrect and conspiracy theories, theorists, and that got caught up in the web. This is why you can never trust these people to make these decisions. Certainly don't trust the AI bots that make the decision. But even the individual humans, because when they do the appeal, humans look at it, and even the humans like, no. What? God, it's so backwards, man. Look, I, I said it before, I'll say it again. I'll lay it out for you. What are the things that shouldn't be allowed? Libel, slander, doxing, targeted harassment, direct threats of violence. Those are the things that cross a real line, and that's even like, not only might you get banned, but that's like, Criminal territory. You're actually committing crimes. I got it. Even every free speech absolutist looks at that and goes, sure. But that's it. But that outside of that, you got to let people talk. You got to let people say stuff. You got to let people, you got to give people the freedom to be wrong, to, to mess stuff up. 
like that has to be allowed. If not, what what's the end game of this? Because who's going to fact check the fact checkers? How do we know that the fact checkers are right about stuff? Obviously, they're not. They made the wrong decision here. Bring back their channel. Are you kidding me? They have a hilarious podcast. It's a great podcast. It's fun. It's funny. It's interesting. Um, and they just got the hammer dropped on them for no goddamn reason. God, it all started when the media started running fear-mongering pieces about spread of misinformation and disinformation, and these sensitive-ass social media companies, you know, overreacted and cracked down on everything, and, you know, this happened with Adpocalypse. One Nestle ad ran on some white supremacist channel, and then they, they turned around and defunded all of news and politics for like a week, and we got caught up in that. Why should I have to punish because some Nestle ad ran on some asshole's channel? I had nothing to do with that. It doesn't affect the you know, how correct my work is, or how thoughtful my work is, but they were just like, hey, we don't want the problem, ban it, we want to stop the negative press. Here's an idea. Who cares about the negative press? They're paper tigers anyway. They only have the power over you as a social media company as much as you let them have the power over you. Whatever happened to, no, you're wrong. Whatever happened to that? Why can't you say that to the media when they run these fear-mongering pieces? Because, by the way, the media has a conflict of interest. The media doesn't want new media overriding them, so... They have an incentive to blow up every little thing that happens in new media and independent media and say, see, these people are crazy. They go, see, they're crazy. That's why you got to come to us all the time and forget them. They view it as competition. I, I mean, the fact that they haven't pieced this together, the people at the top of YouTube, or they haven't, they don't care, or they're still going along with the narrative anyway, it's devastating. And we've all been impacted by it to one extent or another, whether it was the original adpocalypse, or now, of course, it's the algorithm. That the algorithm flat out strangles some channels. My channel's strangled by the algorithm. We put out the same amount of content, same quality content, as we always did. We used to gain 30 or 40,000 subs a month. Now we don't gain any subs a month. So now you can, oh, Kyle, you fell off, or it's because the election, you know, ended, so therefore you're not going to have as much growth. I've been on this platform for a decade. I know the ebbs and flows. I know the trends. I know the way everything unfolds. And I'll tell you what, it absolutely is possible you have a 40% drop in subs or something like that after an election. What is not possible is you go from gaining 30,000 or 40,000 subs to zero. That doesn't happen unless YouTube comes out and admits we are prioritizing authoritative news sources, authoritative CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, those hacks who are wrong about most stuff they say. We're prioritizing them over independent and new media. And they came out and admitted it, and that's what happened. It coincided perfectly with that announcement that my channel and other independent media channels hit a fucking wall when it came to new views and new subgrowth. That's not a coincidence. That is not a coincidence. So we have to find a way around this stuff. And they got it even worse than I do. Jordan Chariton has it even worse than I do. I mean, they hide his stuff more than they hide anybody else's stuff. Um, this is just a band that is... Unfair, totally illegitimate. Even according to their own terms of service, the idea is you can't promote election conspiracies. They don't say you can't mock it. Look, I'll say it again. Support independent media as much as possible. When we had TJ, the Amazing Atheist, on Crystal Kyle and Friends, uh, they got a nice little bump in, in Patreon subs over at their podcast. So go support them however you can. You know, Become a member of uh, their Patreon and help them out because it's obviously a difficult time for them and what they're going through is totally unfair and totally illegitimate. And look, support all independent media however you can. If you can throw this show two or three bucks a month, greatly appreciate it. Um, if you can like all the videos and um, click the bell and sub and, you know, post it on your own social media, post it on Facebook, try to send it, send it around as much as possible because we got to find a way around the algorithm because it absolutely, positively, 100%, without a doubt, strangles all of us who are out here doing good work and are buried. And this is even a level above the buried that I'm used to seeing because they just unfairly gave a strike on their channel. So, um, YouTube reversed this decision. By the way, final point, tweet it at YouTube creator, at YouTube creators on Twitter. Tweet at them and say, bring back the Deep Fat Fried podcast but do a little bit of a public uh, pressure campaign because they need to reverse this. This is an absolutely disgraceful decision. And I'm just sorry that these guys, who are good guys, had to go through this horrendous, annoying thing. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.